Oh, hello. You know, over the years, I've accumulated a few random boosters. These are oftentimes gifts or trades or other odd situations where I end up walking away with, say, a booster pack of legends, which I am going to be opening today in the great chaos booster pack opening of Tolarian Community College, six packs from throughout Magic the Gathering's timeline, culminating in me opening a booster pack of legends. What are we going to get? Are we going to get the value that these booster packs would sell for individually on the market? Let's find out. All right, here we go. I'll be opening an Alliances pack, an Onslaught pack, Oath of the Gate Watch. Yeah, I, I threw that in because I'm hoping there's an expedition in there, okay? Original Zendikar. Hey, come on, Hidden Treasure. And yeah, that pack is from the first print run of Original Zendikar. Torment, and wow, I get to open a Legends pack. Amazing. All right, let's start with Alliances. Alliances packs go for about $32.99 each. The prices I display for each of these packs is me using Card Kingdom prices on loose packs here, and that's more or less the average, give or take a couple bucks. What are the most expensive cards in Alliances that I might grab? Number one, Force of Will at $85, followed by Lake of the Dead at $25, and Helm of Obedience at $16.55. Now, it's interesting to note that Force of Will was an uncommon common in alliances. So it's always very exciting to see. Oh my God, right off the bat, right off the bat. Force of will, $85, woo, woo. Snap, the number one and number two most valuable cards from the set. Next up, we have Onslaught at $19.99 a pack. Now, this is where the original five fetch lands come to us from. Later reprinted in Cons of Tarkir, and again reprinted in exactly zero of the Master sets, zero of the Commander pre-cons, or any pre-cons for that matter. Those five lands are obviously five of the most expensive cards in the set, though funnily enough, Mana Echoes is worth slightly more than Windswept Heath. Huh. Oath of the Gatewatch, still going for four bucks a pack. Part of one of the worst magic blocks ever. It's one highlight where the expeditions included as lottery cards. We're actually returning to Zendikar again in the fall. Think we'll get expeditions again? Cause we sure as heck are not getting fetch lands reprinted, just as they were not reprinted in this previous return to Zendikar.
speaking of original Zendikar, here we go. And these first run packs had hidden treasure in them that were throw-ins of reserved list cards like Moxes and original dual lands. The four most valuable cards in the set are four of the five fetch lands to premiere in Zendikar, but Arid Mesa is worth slightly less than Oracle of Moldaya, which has never been reprinted. Before I open the Legends pack, I am doing Torment. Cabal Coffers is worth something. The others, eh, you know, I'm mostly opening this now just to torment you. Legends. I can't believe I get to open a Legends. I started playing Magic right after this set, and I don't believe I ever bought and opened a pack in high school. So many Fallen Empires, though. Did get to open an Italian Legends pack in Las Vegas one time, and I had, yeah, modest luck in that instance. Prices per pack? Well, Card Kingdom was sold out, Channel Fireball sold out, Star City Games and Cool Stuff Inc. didn't even have listings for sold out packs of Legends. On TCG Player, I found stores selling packs for $375 each. And wow, a uh, tabernacle is $1,800. New to Magic the Gathering rules specific to legends. Uh, rampage, bands with other. Fascinating, huh? Huh, apparently this set has something called gold cards as well. Well, let's see which legends I get.
I hope very much that it was fun to watch me open up these booster packs, but not so much fun that you'll be tempted to go out and buy some of your own to crack open for value. That is not the best use of your cash. Fun is fun, of course, but if you are looking for cards to build decks for constructed, the best way to spend your money is to buy the singles you need down at your local game store to build the decks that you want to play. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this and other videos from me. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. Targeting our Archaeomancer with Ghostly Flicker, we can return our Flicker back to our hand after it resolves. Flicker, however, requires us to hit two targets, and that's where this gets extra evil. By choosing Chittering Rats as our second Flicker target, we can repeatedly make our opponent put cards from their hand on top of their deck, both depriving them of cards to play with as well as future draw steps. The reason we call this deck Ratlock is because of this combo. Once your opponent is left with no cards in their hand, we can simply cast Ghostly Flicker on an Archaeomancer and a Chittering Rats during our opponent's draw steps after they've drawn their card for turn thus ensuring that